this contemplation is on the fundamental concept of resonance. So my invitation is to come down into a heart opener, but if you'd like to stay in a seated position, stay in a seated position. I am going to take one block. You could take it on the low height or the medium height underneath the back of the bottom tips of your shoulder blades. So right behind the bottom tips of your shoulder blades. And then let your head rest onto a block and your feet can be <clears throat> any way that feels good. Just make sure the back of your block is right behind the back of your skull, not on your neck. And the block is supporting the bottom tips. So you have this nice harmonious arc through your whole spine without creating any kinks or creases in the hose, in the vine of your spine, and then let your hands be wherever's comfortable. And allow your eyes to close. So we begin in this gesture, this heart opening gesture, which is really significant because all of the mudras and gestures and shapes that we create in the yoga practice are designed to have a really specific energetic effect. So even if we did nothing but open our body in a certain way, what we're already inviting is this sense of induction, the way that electricity or the life force is conducted around the body. You might have heard of power posing before. There's the Harvard research on holding the body in certain power positions that start to change the chemistry and the physiology of the body. So the scientists are catching up with what the yoga practice has kind of taught us for thousands of years, that whenever we put the body in a certain shape, we begin to conduct the energy in a very specific way and all of these heart openers that we do in the practice they set us into a resonance with the frequency or with the energy of the heart so see if for these beginning few moments of this contemplation maybe rather than thinking about any part of your body the heart center or your hips or your pelvis or any other part that you might otherwise think of with a mental thought picture. See if you can drop any intellectual effort and come into just the sensation that you feel, noticing the body's language, this body that is a multilingual, a multilingual being and speaks to you in color and temperature and density and texture. Maybe there are pockets of heat, that glow of passion, of connection. Maybe some parts feel more cold, like the coldness of a non-conviction. So see if you can forget about any shape that your body is in terms of how you know it with your physical eyes and allow the backs of your eyes to flicker open start to explore the inner landscape of your body just scanning through the texture with the inner vision And so resonance really means if you had a tuning fork and you hit a tuning fork and then brought another fork close to it, it would start to vibrate at the same frequency. It would become inspired by the first tuning fork and they would begin to vibrate harmoniously together. And that vibration could amplify infinitely unless it came into contact with any of obstruction or friction. And so the same thing occurs in the yoga practice. 
And a really good analogy to help us understand this concept is that each one of us is like a small radio, a small emitter receptor radio. And the world around us, the universe is like the central broadcasting station. And the whole purpose of practicing is to act as a catalyst for resonating with these energies that catapult our growth and catapult our evolution. The tuning fork is the power of our awareness, where we send our mind, where we send our attention. So you can imagine if you plugged into a radio station with really terrible commentary and awful music, then that's what the message that is collected by our attention and is fed into our experience. But if we begin to attune ourselves, like here we attune the body to the frequency of an openness. And then the creme de la creme of that is to attune the mind in the same direction as the gesture opens us into. So we focus on the heart. We focus on shifting our consciousness from finite to infinite openness and possibility then that's what we start to create in the world around us that's what we resonate with and we pull towards us and we emit back out our rational our logical mind is always so sure of what we're capable of and we limit our capacity to meet the moment openly so if we're hardwired if we're looped into fear and contraction, then that's ultimately what will show up in our lives. But if we can drop out of that certitude and maybe surrender ourselves to a higher intelligence, maybe just for one moment or one minute every day, imagine the possibilities that the doorways becoming available to us. And the higher intelligence that moves through us never lays down tracks that have been pre-made, only ever laying tracks that are powdery and new, so we can never really know what step is next. And this openness is necessary just to meet our moments, not from a place of past expectation. Take three more breaths wherever you are. Deep breath in through the nose. There's this feeling of praying along the breath or being pulled into prayer by the breath. The breath in meditation is synonymous with the word spirit. And if that word prayer or spirit has collected or garnered some kind of conditioned meaning for you, maybe it's just a feeling, a feeling that means surrendering yourself, your will, your intellect, and trusting that there is this greater force or greater intelligence moving through you that allows you to trust in life and trust in self without having to know the end destination, just one mini cliff to jump off next. Slowly slide the soles of your feet back onto the earth. Take one more deep breath in here. Exhale through the mouth. And then roll yourself off slowly to one side. Slide the block out from underneath the back of your heart, the back of your head, and let yourself lay back down so the spine can recalibrate. The palms can come wherever is comfortable. Feel the byproduct of that circuit of induction that you created through the energetic gesture, these postures. They're not fixed and static. We're not posing, but they create an awareness and energetic channeling or filtering in the body that 
impact us on every layer, not just the physical body, but the energetic, the mental, the emotional, all the way up to our causal, to our spirit body. How much can you refine your attention to feel into all of the koshas, the carriers of consciousness, the layers and thresholds from most gross to most subtle? Roll yourself onto one side, let your knees come up towards your chest. Let the spine be like this mountain that's cradling the back of your heart for a moment. And then press into your hands and find your way all the way up into a comfortable seated position. Hands can come down into the lap. Drink a breath in through both nostrils. Flood the belly. Pause at the top, and as you exhale, let the breath waves spill out. 